So thank you for the introduction and thank you to the organisers for uh, giving me the opportunity to present Adapt Immune uh, to you today. I'd also like to thank the previous speakers actually on the panels because they've done a great job in introducing um, T-cell therapies, the power of T-cell therapies and in particular the fact that there are two approaches um, in immunotherapy that are making strides at the moment. One is the CAR-T programme uh, of work and there are several companies I think really led by Novartis sort of moving that programme forward. And then I think really at the moment, we're probably, well, we believe we are the leader in engineered TCR T-cell therapy. And I'm going to um, take you through Adapt Immune's story. So just an overview, uh, we focus on engineering the T-cell receptors, only the T-cell receptors. And we believe the engineering is really the really important thing in terms of making a potent TCR-targeted T-cell. We've got compelling clinical data, um, in, uh, including complete responses in myeloma and, crucially, in sarcoma, the first sign of uh, T-cell therapy working in a solid tumour setting. We have actually a long pipeline of validated targets, um, and as I'll show you, the reasons that those are largely unavailable to, to CAR approaches is they are intracellular. Um, we announced a major strategic deal with GSK in, in, uh, at ASCO uh, in the middle of this year and then followed that, um, as, as in the kind introduction, with a, a significant Series A, preferred Series A financing, which we announced in September. And the strategy of the company is to really build a major oncology franchise uh, on the basis of those T-cell therapy programs. So just a little bit of history, uh, because some of you may be thinking, who on earth is Adaptimune and where have they come from? Well, we've actually been around in a previous form for quite some time. The original company developing engineering of T-cell receptors was Avidex, and that was spun out of Oxford University in 1999 to really focus on the idea of making a soluble uh, T-cell receptor, which was obviously difficult because it's a membrane-bound protein, uh, but it was ultimately achieved by Avidex, and then engineering that using phage display to make it high affinity to bind uh, to cancer targets. Um, and actually, that was the point that the company um, ran out of steam and was acquired by the German biotech, um, biotech company Medigene. But all through that time, uh, there was a project working on putting T-cells and enhanced affinity T-cell receptors back into T-cells, and really that was beginning to show some promise, um, largely through a collaboration which existed in those days with Carl June. You've heard a lot about the expertise at the University of Penn uh, earlier this morning. So we also had a collaboration with Carl, bringing our T-cell receptors into his translational setup and putting uh, initial programs into the clinic, uh, originally under his sponsorship. After 2011, when he became a little busy with the CAR program and the Novartis partnership, we, um, we moved away from having everything really fixated around Penn to having our own infrastructure, our own sponsorship of programs, and maintaining a great relationship with the, with the Penn team, but, but very much more at arm's length, and have built the infrastructure from 2011 onwards, sponsorship of our own programs, all running in the US in terms of the clinic. And then, as I um, mentioned, signed those, uh, that major deal and, led, uh, and raised the significant uh, funds this year. So the company has gone from uh, two employees, of which I was one in 2008, um, up to something, well, actually, this is already out of date. It's a week old, and it's out of date. So we're 55 in the UK and 15 in Philadelphia, and that's set to double by this time next year. So... As mentioned, I'm very grateful to the prior panel for introducing the concepts around uh, how a T cell um, is equipped to recognize um, target cells. So um, the endogenous machinery of, of turnover of all prep proteins is, is really represented by this cartoon. An intracellular protein is, is, is processed. There's a turnover going on all of the time. It goes on to a, a transporter molecule, onto these um, tissue-type molecules Emma referred to, uh, major histocompatibility, which is referred to as the human leukocyte antigen in man. And here's the sausage uh, referred to. This is the, the European frankfurter, if you like. Um, and so that's the peptide, uh, a single peptide from the particular protein which is presented on the cell surface. And that is the natural um, ligand. That is what the T-cell receptor, any natural T-cell receptor, is, is, is um, thymically developed to, to recognise, uh, evolutionary developed to recognise. Um, and so what we focus on is engineering T-cell receptors so they have slightly higher affinity for those peptides from the HLA complex from this large pool of intracellular proteins, intracellular targets. 
Whereas, as we heard, the, the, car, pro, the car technologies, the antibody technologies, obviously re rely on having a cell surface protein which is recognised either by an antibody and now through engineering of chimeric antigen receptors by putting the antibody recognition domain with some cell signalling domains to drive a CAR T cell to recognise uh, the same targets. So rather large difference in terms of the, the targets and the biology uh, of what we do. We use a lentiviral vector to, to put those modified T-cell receptor genes back into the T-cell, uh, and then they are slightly more potent, and I'll show you why that's really important in the concept of TCR, T-cell therapies. <laughs> so what does it mean for the patient? We've heard quite a bit about that in terms of what's required to, to get this into a commercialisable, clinically accessible therapy. Well, right now... The patient, if they're eligible uh, for the therapy, that means they have not only the target antigen for that peptide, but also the right tissue type. They have their blood apheres locally at the, at the clinical centre, shipped to a central manufacturing site where the um, T cells are modified, the TCR gene is introduced, and then they're expanded. Uh, for us, this is a process of 10 to 12 days to get to that point, and we use a particular proprietary system for... Um, which is really the, sort of the, the, the system of, of choice for, for in the field for expanding those T cells to get the right type of T cells, as also as Emma touched on, to send back to the patient. And one of the uh, features of this is that patients undergo a lymphodepleting chemotherapy. They have chemo to knock down their incoming T cells. Um, and this creates an environment where they are, um, their host environment is, is, is effectively ready to stimulate the growth and expansion of the incoming cells. But this doesn't do anything, um, historically, doesn't do anything to the actual disease the key, uh, of the patient. We go in with a, a, t a target dose of 1 to 10 billion cells, around half, of, well, somewhere around 35% of those will have our targeted NYESO T cell receptor, as I'll show you, uh, on them. And now, the thing about this is that those cells then expand in the patient in direct relation to the antigen that they see. So it, this is a paradigm that's really very different to um, giving any other kind of molecule, any other kind of therapy to, to a patient. Just wanted to um, explain, really, why engineering the T-cell receptor is really the thesis behind the company. Um, and, and the reason for this is that uh, early in human development, the thymus... Um, actively processes and deletes out T cell receptors from our natural repertoire that would, um, that would target um, in internal proteins, normal human proteins. Um, and that's obviously for safety reasons, otherwise we would have raging autoimmune disease. And, and so it's, it's been evolved um, o over the centuries to, to do that, over, over billions of years to do that. And so that's essentially something that's a feature of the immune system. So that means that T cells that we do have in the repertoire are fundamentally low, if they're there at all, um, typically have very low natural affinity and don't activate and stimulate uh, in response to natural self proteins. The other thing is that the cancer typically downregulates what it shows on the cell surface of those proteins too. So there are two reasons why uh, a natural T cell uh, fundamentally um, is unable to recognize um, the, the target cancer. And our technology is based over the, the decade or so we've been developing it on using um, an aphage display mechanism to enhance the natural affinity of that alpha beta T cell receptor from around here. Um, this is a response assay that shows you when those T cells are, activated, are, are incubated with the target, they don't activate, which is really what the, re the brown dots represent. As you increase that affinity, we produce ranges, we produce panels of multiple affinities, um, you go up the activity range to get to one in the sweet spot where you do see activation that is specific um, to that target. And having it be specific to the cancer is also extremely important. We have mechanisms for making sure it is only specific to the, to the cancer target as well, which I, I can't go into today. So the pipeline is significant. We're in the clinic, and I'm going to go on very quickly to talk about the some of the clinical data. Um, but we have our program targeting a cancer testis antigen called uh, NYESO. Uh, it's a target that's well known in the cancer field. The target itself has no IP on it, but other, others are also trying to make T cell receptors to it. Ours has been around for some time, and we're in the clinic now in multiple uh, tumours. And I'll show you some of the sarcoma and myeloma data in the next couple of slides. This is the program that we have partnered with GSK under option. It's still our program today. We run it forward as a co-development with them for the next two years uh, until, they, until basically it's ready for pivotal, um, pivotal steps. 
We've also got our own proprietary programs going into the clinic, uh, and the next one of those will go in in breast cancer the middle of next year, and then another indication following that um, by the end of uh, 2015. The next one is following uh, in a single indication, actually, in 2016, and then we will have one a year from there on uh, with from our own program, and then there will be in addition to GSK's programs. So just a word on the NYESO uh, T-cell receptor product. We're uh, in the clinic here in, the, the, uh, in various uh, cancer types, and this shows the frequency of the NYESO expression in those different types of cancer. I'm just about to open an esophageal study in Europe, and a non-small cell lung cancer study uh, will also open in the US. These are others, all of these are in, in the US uh, at this point in time. Um, I've talked about the, the fact that we use a lentiviral vector. Uh, we do centralised manufacture of those cells. And we've treated 42 patients so far, 27 in the myeloma setting and 15 in, in solid, solid tumours. And we've seen some great efficacy and safety. And actually, one of the distinctions of the TCRs is we don't see the same type of um, cytokine release toxicities. We do see them in some patients, but they are much, uh, much milder. So just two slides on the clinical data. This uh, was data presented in the sarcoma study uh, just a couple of weeks ago, actually, in, uh, in Berlin at the uh, Connective Tissue Oncology Society meeting by one of our uh, lead PIs on, from the NCI Pediatric Oncology Branch. And the thing I'd really draw your attention to, what we have here are the different patients, but we also have how much of that target antigen do they have, how many cells they've ha they have, and this is partly a feature of how, uh, how good the apheresis product is we start off with. But this is really the headline, which is really remarkable to get not only complete responses, but a steady, durable, ongoing partial responses. And in fact, actually, this one was not fully available at the time of presentation. So really, we're seeing sort of 80% response rate, which has never been seen in a solid tumor setting, certainly not in sarcoma and uh, not with T-cell therapy before. And the spider plot over here just shows you um, how the tumour volume is shrinking over time. This particular patient, which I can show you on the next slide, uh, lost all tumour really by three months, and that persisted out beyond nine months. And these three patients here um, all had gradually shrinking tumours over nine months, six months, and four months, respectively, um, to get to the stage where their tumours could be resected, uh, removed, and they're now all tumour-free. So although that sort of slightly confounds the analysis, um, it's great for the patients. So just one slide to show you what this looks like uh, in action. This is that complete response patient who had a metastatic uh, disease uh, widely disseminated throughout the lungs. And you see the, the nodules here. Um, and the, the PET scan over there it shows you the, ba the baseline for that particular patient. By day two after the infusion, the patient was experiencing symptoms, shortness of breath, high fever, um, mild, mild cytokine release in, uh, syndrome symptoms effectively. And so we came in for a CT scan, and what you see here is inflammation of the T cells around the tumor nodules. Um, and they, the patient came through that without any further intervention. And by day 100, um, it looked very clearly like a, like a complete response on the CT scan. So a PET scan came in, and I think you know, they turned up the dial. This is natural. This is what you would normally see uh, for the dye in terms of thymus and, and the heart. Um, really couldn't see any sign of tumour at all. So the patient uh, was tumour-free for, for nearly um, for, over, for well over nine months. Just in myeloma, the only other data slide I've got time to show you today in the autologous tra uh, stem cell transplant setting where we've been giving our T cells in the first instance, we've seen a, also something of a quite incredible complete and near complete response rate. Um, and that's really il illustrated, this was data presented at ASH last year. Um, this is now a 25 patient study. We've just closed because the, um, the, the analysis has held up and we've shown that this is a um, significant in comparison to um, baseline studies. When we compare the T cells, uh, at the, with a near complete or complete response rate to what normally happens in the context of stem cell transplants or stem cell transplant with Velcade, we, we see a really significant uplift. Um, and some of these patients are now um, out beyond two years post-treatment with a single infusion of T-cells. So we have a non-transplant study now enrolling where we're keen to see whether we can save the same kind of potency without the background of the autologous stem cell transplant. So just a word to put this into context. So giving you an idea of what the company does, what it has its novel, 
uh, what, where we are in the clinic. But one of the really critical pieces I think we've been hearing uh, in the earlier present in the earlier discussions is the importance of making this real for patients and real commercially as a product. Uh, for our partners, for ourselves, for our investors and shareholders. So for a long time now, we have been working on how to optimise the cell process, how to optimise the, the lentiviral vector, the plans to bring in automation to this, ensuring that we are characterising effectively potent products. And of course, it needs a companion diagnostic for patient selection. And so all of that is work, um, if you like, going on beneath the waterline, which is obviously crucial to, um, to get to... Um, uh, to get to a commercialisable programme and commercialisable product. And this is work that we now do in partnership with GSK going forward for NYESO, but uh, we retain for our own pipeline. Just a word on the GSK deal itself. So this is an option on that NYESO programme. Um, we continue to, to do the, the development work until pivotal studies start, and we have worked through a, um, a full development plan with the, with the GSK. It, work, it covers the CMC optimization, the clinical context, the companion diagnostic, and we retain the IP for all of that for our own programs. Significant funding, one of the largest deals, I think, um, uh, for GSK, and certainly announced post the Novartis deal, so signifying a significant commitment <coughs> to cell therapy as a new domain for oncology. Um, and we'll have a, a further collaboration on, uh, on TCRs, but we will retain the largest share of the pipeline for, for the company. So just one slide on uh, differentiating, really, what it is that Adaptimune has that's different to perhaps some of the other companies that you may have um, heard about in the TCR space in particular. I haven't talked today about the fact that we actually have a, a platform, an in-house platform technology finding um, new targets, new peptides, new sausages, if you like. We have uh, a proprietary way of finding new TCRs. The engineering, I've, I've emphasised the importance of that. And we've been working on the, uh, the CMC piece for some time, including the, the novelty of using this particular, the exclusive licence actually we have for those bees for TCRs. So all of that um, is one of the, the key distinctions of what Adaptimmune has that's, that's really different to, to others doing TCRs um, in, in the space. So last slide, just to summarise, um, we, we did raise rather a lot of money uh, in September. Um, a really, for, from really A-grade investors, we didn't even dip into the, the B list of potential in investors, and, and it was certainly over, well oversubscribed. So the company is really now backed by a strong a strategic partnership with GSK. Um, we anticipate strong news flow over the next um, two years, well, the next several years, in fact, um, and the vision of the company is really now to take this forward, um, backed by really strong science, um, to take our own um, pipeline into the clinic uh, in partnership with the, the programmes that GSK will also take forward. I think I may have time for a couple of questions. I'm not sure. No. no. Okay. <laughs>